We know Jordan Love holds the keys to this Green Bay Packers offense, but Romeo Dobbs is the X Factor. Plus, I promise you do not have to care about the Packers players posting pictures of them enjoying their time off. I promise all of that's on today's show. You are locked on Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash Locked on. So... We've talked about Jordan Love a lot over the last few weeks and months. And I think I have compellingly made the case that Christian Watson at least has the talent to be a bona fide receiver one for the Green Bay Packers as soon as this year. And in fact, in the second half of last season, we saw him do it. We know the run game is going to be good. It just is. Even against loaded boxes, even against teams geared up to stop the Packers. And we talked at length last week about this idea of teams doing just that, daring Jordan Love to beat them. Well, part of that is going to be daring the Packers receivers to beat them in man coverage. And I think press man coverage. Now this is comes at an interesting time in the NFL, where the use of two high safeties has never been more prevalent in the NFL. And so this idea that you're going to load the box every play, dare the Packers to throw the ball over your head, it's really just not how the NFL tends to operate, even for teams that have good defenses. Teams like the Bills, they sit in too high all day. The Rams, when they were winning Super Bowl, they sat in too high a lot. And so, and the 49ers, those really good defenses, they played a lot of too high coverages. You're not always going to get, you know, cover one press on the outside. You're not always going to get quarters against Vic Fangio teams. It's just not that world anymore. But on the money downs on third down, that's when you see a rise in man coverage across the league. In the red zone, teams are more likely to play man coverage. And if you only have one guy who can threaten defenses in man coverage, let's call him Christian Watson, it becomes much easier for teams playing too high to have a safety to that side and to make sure you're capping that one, that you're bringing bracket coverage, cloud coverage, all these different ways teams try to take out Devontae Adams over the years. They they are, I promise you, we will see very early in the year, teams respect the ability of Christian Watson to get vertically. Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft eventually profile as the kinds of guys who can win their matchups, who can be bucket getter, Musgraves in particular, with his movement skills, his body, his speed. He can be, I'm not going to compare him to George Kittle purely as a player because George Kittle is like one of the best tight ends of his generation. But that sort of movable chess piece in the offense who can play in line, who can move outside, you're going to dial up shot plays for him. But he can also go and run these double move routes in the red zone, 
can run stick nod, can can run these stick return routes, stick China. Those opportunities on third down make your life easier. And I think, you know, there was some uh, some conversations about the Packers and and whether or not the coaches looked at what the 49ers did protecting Brock Purdy. Well, those guys have a ton of weapons, a ton of receivers who can win. Now, a lot of it is winning formationally where they've won before the snap. They know pre-snap, okay, based on your alignment and what you're probably going to play, this call is going to work. We've just out-leveraged you based on your rules, based on how we know your defense functions. We know we're going to have a guy in one-on-one coverage, running to grass. And that's what you have to have. Romeo Dobbs is the best route runner on this team. He is the guy on the outside. I'm going to get to Jaden Reed in a second, but on the outside, who has the ability to go and win against man coverage because he's such a crisp route runner. The thing that teams realized, though, last year was at the release... And on the route stem, you can be physical with him. And this was the biggest concern that I had with him at Nevada. And that was, you can move him off his spot. The beauty of that is, that's fixable. You get a little older, you get a little stronger, you get a little smarter about how you attack defenders. And that stuff can go away because we know he can create separation When guys don't get their hands on him. We know he can create vertically. Slot fades. They put him in the slot a decent amount. With the idea that. That way he doesn't. You can't press him at the line of scrimmage. He's going to get that free release. And then he's going to get into his route. There's. I know that there's going to be a lot of excitement. For Jaden Reed and Dontavian Wicks. And Grant DuBose. And I'm excited for them too. I think they're very talented players. And I think that. With the exception of Reed. Wicks and DuBose were drafted much later than their talent indicates they deserved to be drafted. But I'm, I want to be clear about this. Romeo Dobbs is the most talented of those players. And I'm going to include Jaden Reed in this. I believed pre-draft Romeo Dobbs was a better prospect than Jaden Reed. I know that the NFL disagreed. The Packers clearly disagreed. They took Jaden Reed much sooner than they took Romeo Dobbs. I'm just telling you from from what I watched in college, that's how I viewed him. And so I know you're going to go, okay, Jaden Reed, he's going to have all these opportunities, Dontavian Wicks, we'll look at these splash plays from 2021, vertical threat, all that stuff. Well, Romeo Dobbs is faster, was more productive in college, more consistent in college, and actually played NFL football last year and actually at times looked really good last year, especially before he got hurt. Showed the ability to win in adversity situations. Yes, at the snap, at the line of scrimmage, there there can be some issues with him getting off press. And yes, in his routes, you can be physical with him. But at the catch point, he's got that my ball mentality. I think you need guys who can win off the line of scrimmage, create separation and win outside. It can't just be from the slot. I mean, we saw that. It, it is... In, in a lot of cases, just too muddy in there. Now, there are ways to do that. We saw last year, Randall Cobb in the slot, just a little inbreaker, little option route maybe to get free. Alan Lazard on some, on some design plays. Slants, use that big body. We saw Devontae Adams a few years ago in the slot win on third downs, especially vertically. But how many times was the call on the outside, Devontae Adams just one-on-one go win on a slant, on a on a something, whatever it is. You're just going to have more space outside the numbers, fewer bodies to operate. It's a cleaner field of vision for Jordan Love. You're going to need those guys to win. And this offense in San Francisco was unlocked, not when Debo Samuel took off. The offense was good two years ago. It was borderline unstoppable last year, not because Brock Purdy was awesome. He wasn't. Kyle Shanahan was awesome, and the skill talent was awesome. George Kittle stayed healthy. Brandon Ayuk took a jump, and you had Debo Samuel, who was not even that good last year, but you had that other guy. You had that other guy who could win, 
And having that is so vital. And in a lot of ways, this is the same conversation we had for years about the Devontae Adams Packers. Is there another guy? Now, I'm not going to say Christian Watson is going to be Devontae Adams, but it's the same idea. When you have a receiver who's going to draw all this attention, and that is what Christian Watson is going to do, whether he draws exactly as much attention as Devontae Adams, not the point. He is going to have gravity. Do you have someone else who can win one-on-one? And in 2019, we saw it was Jordan Love. Or excuse me, it was Aaron Jones. Jordan Love. It was Aaron Jones who was able to do that in Kansas City. I talk about this a lot. We haven't quite seen that as much over the last few years. His ability to win as a route runner, his ability to win against linebackers and safeties. He the the dime that Jordan Love threw him on the whole shot against Philly, he dropped. He's just not going to be as consistent catching the ball. It's not it's not what he does. He can do it. It's just not what he does the way that it is for a receiver. So the Packers need one of these secondary receivers to step up. And I think the best candidate is Romeo Dobbs. He is the X factor. If let me, Let's lay this out as, as plainly as possible. The offensive line is, the starters are good. They have good depth. The running game is good. They have good depth at running back. Jordan Love is very talented. He's got experience in the system. And in Matt LaFleur's scheme and the tree of offenses he comes from, it is easier there than in other places to play quarterback. It is going to be easier this year for Jordan Love to play quarterback than it was last year schematically because you're just not going to ask the quarterback to read out as much. You're not going to ask the quarterback to make as many money throws because it's it's just a different kind of offense. Yes, I think this offense will be easier on Jordan Love. So the question then becomes, when you can't do the work for Jordan Love, when you can, and this was always the Jimmy Garoppolo problem, the Jared Goff problem, the, the Kirk Cousins problem in a way, the Baker Mayfield problem. On third and eight, can you quarterback and receiver just go win? And how many of those guys do you have? If it's just Christian Watson, It becomes easier to take that away. If you have Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs, now you really, really have something. All right, we're going to get into a little little kerfuffle that happened over the weekend. I think it's appropriate because it is Memorial Day after all um, to talk about the party and the pictures and the response mostly from Bears fans. But I, I saw some Packer fans Get annoyed about this too. We're going to talk about that before we do. Today's episode brought to you by friends at FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. An absolutely bonkers game six in Miami that it looked like the Heat were definitely going to lose. Then it looked like the Heat were definitely going to win with three seconds left. Jimmy Butler makes three free throws. Marcus Smart goes on to miss a, a bad shot but almost makes it. In and out, and Derek White follows. Doesn't seem like he got it off in time. In real time, I thought for sure it was late. The announcing crew thought it was late. They showed one replay, and it was like, nope, he got that off at point one, and it's gonna be a game seven. Absolutely incredible. And these are the moments. These are the moments that make FanDuel really fun because if you're sweating out a cover, now you've got even more at stake. I don't even have any money on the game. I did put some money on F1, um, but that was that would be even more exciting. And if you're a new customer, you can get a no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars. In fact, my mother in law is here visiting because she's helping out with um, our, our new daughter. I got her on Fanduel, and she bet on F1, and she got her no sweat no sweat first bet. She didn't hit it, but she got her bonus bet, her money back. And if she would have hit, by the way, she would have won seven hundred dollars which would have been pretty freaking cool. So why don't you give it a try? Now visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. I don't know a better pitch than I got my mother-in-law on it. Like, come on. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Every dayers. This week on the show, Trevor Sikama wrote a great profile on Christian Watson for Pro Football Focus. He is going to be on the show this week to talk about that and a lot more. All of that coming up this week on Locked on Packers, your team every day. 
Speaking of Christian Watson, poor Christian Watson. Jordan Love was, he was not in the weight room. He was not in the film room, not on the practice field. He's with his boys. Christian Watson, A.J. Dillon, Josiah DeGuara, their ladies. And Simone Biles was there, so presumably Jonathan Owens was there. And they posted some pictures of their boat trip on Memorial Day weekend when there's no practice. And this offended some people. Some people got mad about it. Oh, they should be working on their craft. Give me a break. Give me a break. This is silly. You don't have to be mad about this. I promise. You don't. And if you're not, great. This is not for you. It's okay. There are... there Now, look, I don't want to do a full straw man thing because I know most of the people, at least that I saw, were Bears fans who were complaining about this. And Bears fans are just going to be Bears fans. They're going to complain about stupid stuff. If Justin Fields were out partying with his guys, they'd go, what a leader. Look at that. Look at that guy. I will say it did cross my mind that... We didn't really see these pictures with Aaron Rodgers. And part of that is he's in his late 30s. He's going to be 40 this year. He didn't go on boat parties with his guys. Like, he just didn't really do that. And certainly didn't post pictures about it on Instagram. And part of that is he's way more famous than Jordan Love. And so it's a little bit different. He was at the Taylor Swift concert, Aaron Rodgers was, with Miles Teller. And, you know, seemed like he was having a good time. That's great. But this is kind of my point. Aaron Rodgers was at a Taylor Swift con- uh, concert. Contest? A Taylor Swift contest? It is kind of a contest to get Taylor Swift tickets. And, like, it's one of those things where I I personally just do not care. I- I'm not going to be the guy that's like, this is so great. Because I think that's disingenuous too. I think if you want to be excited about it, I think it's cool that he's friends with the guys. I think that's legitimately cool. Patrick Mahomes, friends with his guys. I think that's great. Josh Allen, friends with his guys. I think that's great. It would be my preference if I had a preference. I don't think it's necessary. You know, Tom Brady, mostly, you know, Julian Edelman, Wes Welker, Rob Gronkowski, those were his guys. Those were his boys. They vacationed together. They hung out together. Like, I do think there is a value to that. That when the chips are down, these are your guys. When things are tough, there's not, it's not going to be this. There's not going to be sniping. There's not going to be finger pointing. And, and in fact, if there is... Your, your buddies, your bros, your friends. Friends can weather those kinds of things. You know who can't? Totally platonic coworkers. Obviously, I'm not talking about romantic relationships. I'm just saying if you're, if you're working with someone and that's all you are, you're just employees, you're just coworkers. It's different. When, when stuff goes down, when stuff gets bad and stuff is going to go wrong and now you start pointing fingers, it is so much more likely that things are going to go off the rails than if you're friends. Now, you might get a little more heated with a friend. Like, hey, man, you messed this up. You screwed this up for all of us. Like, we know those kinds of situations can get a little more volatile with your friends, but you're also more likely to get over it. You're also more likely in a lot of cases to give them the benefit of the doubt and then to come together and fix it. I, I don't I don't think there's there's like a ton of value in that. But I did think it was interesting. Randy Mueller, who used to be the GM of the Saints, who's on the the Athletic Podcast, um, the Athletic Football Show, and, and talks to Mike Sando every week. He talked about how he he felt strongly that Aaron Rodgers not being at OTAs last year sent a message that it was him that it was that he always felt like a player's desire to be at OTAs reflected his desire and a team's desire. The degree to which veterans showed up to OTAs reflected a team's desire to bond. And then in New York, Aaron Rodgers goes. He wanted to be a good soldier in New York. He didn't in Green Bay. There is a non-zero effect of all of this. I do think there is an impact. Now, does it change the arc of the season? No, no, no. It doesn't. But... More to my original point. You do not have to be all football all the time 
to be a really good football player. When it's time to work, work. And that doesn't mean only do it when it is time to work. But we saw the videos of Jordan Love. He's been out in California. He's been working. He had, he did the thing that Aaron Rodgers didn't do consistently. He had Christian Watson out. He had Aaron Jones out. The guys came out and caught passes from him. They have been putting in the extra work. They're at the optional OTAs putting in what really is extra work. They're working. When they're off, they're off. You don't, we don't lionize you for working on a Saturday or a Sunday or on Christmas or on Thanksgiving. And I, I don't think we should. Having a work-life balance is really important. And we have like data on this. These guys work round the clock, round the year on their bodies and on their craft. It is okay for them to get on a boat together and have some fun. And let me let me put a bow on it this way. It would be disingenuous to have any sort of take on Aaron Rodgers not calling you know guys that get drafted or freezing them out in practice or not taking not hanging out with them or um you know uh, not not working out with them in the off season and have a problem with this that would be disingenuous now if you're just the kind of person that is like doesn't think anyone should be posting anything and never have fun that's just who you are i said on twitter like if you have a problem with this you're just a deep down in your soul hater i stand by that i think that's true i don't think you can find an example of me complaining about this in the past although some people tried to make it seem like i'm the guy that complains about this stuff Uh uh-uh i love that these guys are having fun together like if you're just out at the club like it's different than when tom brady like left in the middle of a game week to go to robert Kraft's wedding or whatever that story was that's a different thing that's a weird thing don't do that but on a memorial day weekend when you don't have practice and you're all together be together. Enjoy being together. Enjoy life. If you are a, a, a any sort of profession, but especially a professional athlete, you have a finite amount of time to do your work. And that means their, their work compression is so much more intense than what any of us have. They've got six, eight years if they're so lucky. And they have to work round the clock on their bodies, round the clock on their craft. They Their, their 17-week season is an absolute meat grinder on them physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all those things. They deserve a break. This is kind of like when people complain about like the president, whoever it is, doesn't matter your political stripes, like going to Camp David or taking a vacation. That job is really freaking hard. It's really stressful. I would much rather have someone who has had a little bit of time to recharge and then come back and do the thing. You know how be- how much better you feel after a vacation? Just like getting the batteries to reset a little bit. I love that feeling. Because I always, when I'm on vacation for like five, six, seven days, by the end, I'm ready to get back. I've got ideas. I've got takes I got to get off. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get back to work. I'm excited to get back to work. Whereas when I haven't had a vacation in six months, Cause I don't take very many. I don't get very many off days on this show. I love being here with you guys. You know, in the middle of that, it can be, it's a grind. It can be intense. And I, you know, I'm not always up to it mentally. I have to, I have to do my own work to try and get there. I have to do the Zadaria Smith before the NFC championship. I have to get my mind right before I get on the microphone, because I know if I don't come with it every single show, if I don't come with it every single day, if my takes are not as on point as they as they could be or they they have been, or I get a fact wrong, I get a name wrong, which I, unfortunately my dad brain I've been doing more lately, you're going to let me know. I'm going to hear about it. It's going to get clipped. It's going to get put out there. That's also the part of having having a show that people know, having a show that people can watch. They're going to watch it. They're going to listen to it. And they're going to they're gonna try to find ways to make you slip or try and catch you slipping. 
I'm not trying to get caught slipping. That's why I, with these guys, I respect so much their desire to say, let's go hang out. Let's go on the boat. Let's have a couple drinks. Let's listen to some music. Let's hang out. And of course, do it responsibly. Do it responsibly. If they were being irresponsible, you know, like if they got pulled over by the, you know, whoever's out there patrolling, where I don't know if they're on the lake or where, where, where I assume the lake, the big lake versus a smaller lake. Anyway, that's a different thing. That's not this. That's not this. This is fine. This is fine. And and not just fine. I think it's good. I think it's cool. And I think it is, in a lot of ways, a signal of a new era in Green Bay where you have this young team. This young team is going to grow together. Even the veterans on this team are young. Jerry Alexander is young. Kenny Clark is young. Elton Jenkins is pretty young. These are the veterans. Russell Douglas, young. Even the veterans on this team are young and they are going to have the opportunity to grow together. Being a close-knit team, being a closely bonded team is going to help them. All right, thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Everydayers, I so appreciate you being here. It is, in fact, Memorial Day. We've got more great content coming this week. I mentioned Trevor Sikama is going to be on the show this week talking Christian Watson, who I think is on track to be absolutely bananas this year. Last thing. Our buddy Jake Morley tweeted out um, an over-under on passing yards for Jordan Love. 3,400 is the number. Essentially, every quarterback who played 17 games last year threw for 3,400 yards. We're talking about 200 yards a game. 200 yards a game is not a good number. And... The only guys who played 15 or more and didn't get there are just like trash, bad. And essentially every preferred starter who didn't have a serious injury played 17 games or got to 3,400 yards. There were a number of guys who played 15, 14, 15 games and got to 3,400 yards because it's not that hard to get to 3,400 yards. All of these numbers are just, to me, not in line with reality. Go make some money on them. It's silly. I think, like, it's it's just, if he plays 17 games, he's going to cruise past that number. Cruise. Absolutely cruise past that number. I, I believe, I'll double check this as we, as, we, as we speak here, but I believe that the number was 26 quarterbacks averaged 200 yards or more last year, whether they played 17 games or not. 26. That's like everybody. That's like everybody. So, like, I don't, I don't, I don't really think that this is that big a deal. 3,400, 25 QBs, average 200 yards per game. I was off by one. Davis Mills and Taylor Heineke among them. Like, he's going to get there. He's going to get there. All right, more to come this week, including a, a really interesting thought experiment that I had about Christian Watson and Jordan Love being this young dynamic duo that is going to rise together. All of that coming up later this week. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live, you can do that. And by subscribing on our Locked on Packers YouTube page so you can stay Locked on Packers.